What's up, everybody? My name is Scott Paddock, and today we are going to talk about how to improvise over a chord progression. Recently, I did a YouTube video called How to Turn Chords into Solos. So for that video, I showed you step by step a really easy approach to making a chord sound like a solo. After that, I did a video called How to Turn scales into solos. And I did the same thing. I showed you how to take a scale and make it sound a whole lot more like a solo. So today's video is going to be the next step in that series. And that step is how to solo over chords or more specifically, how to solo over a chord progression. In other words, how to solo moving from one chord to the next chord. So once you learn how to improvise, in other words, make something up from scratch, the next mystery that you have to solve is how to maneuver between different chords. Now, this can be super intimidating for new improvisers, but once you understand some of the basics, it's actually pretty easy to work through. Now, there are definitely some chord progressions that are a lot more difficult than others, but just understanding the basics is pretty easy, and I'm gonna show you how to do it today with just three simple steps. If you're a fan of my videos, then you know that I really like to take complex subjects and break them down into easily digestible bite-sized portions, and that is exactly what we're gonna do today. So we are gonna start off with two measures of G7 and two measures of C7. So just as a little background, if you don't know what a G7 chord is, the G means it is based off of the G major scale, and the seven is telling you to lower the seventh degree by a half step. So you take that F sharp and turn it into an F natural. Now, when you're playing a chord, you do every other note or the odd notes in the scale. So the first, third, fifth, and in this case, the flat seven. So for the key of G, that would be G, B, D, and F. And it would sound like this. And if we have it for two measures, when we do a chord outline, we're gonna play it up one measure and down for the second measure. Then when we hit this third measure, the chord changes. So the chord changes to a C7. So the exact same thing applies for the C7. The C means it's based off of the C major scale. The seven means that you're supposed to lower the seventh degree. So in this case, you would lower the B natural to the B flat. So your chord tones would be C, E, G, and B flat. And because we have this for two measures, we're gonna go up and down. Now, if I play those chord outlines back to back, you're going to hear the chord change. When you're soloing over a chord progression, that is the whole idea, to hear the chords move. So the easiest starting point for improvising over a chord progression is to do a chord outline solo over each of the chords. So all that means is I'm going to take the notes in each of the chords and turn them into a solo, like I showed you how to do in the previous video. So if I do that over the G7 chord, I would start off by just changing the rhythm and repeating some notes. And then the same thing for the C7. So if I put those back to back, this time it's going to sound a little bit more like the solo, and you're still gonna hear the chord progression. So that is your first step, is to just do a chord outline solo. Now, if you play everything in root position and in order, meaning one, three, five, seven, then it's not gonna sound very much like a solo. It's gonna sound a whole lot more like chords. So the easiest way to fix that is just to jump around in the chords. So I'm gonna do a plain example, and this time I'm gonna play the G7, the C7, then go back to the G7, the C7, G7, C7. So I'm just gonna cycle back and forth between these four measures. And 
Improvising using chord tones is the perfect first step to getting comfortable playing over a chord progression. Again, a chord progression is just a fancy musical ter term for playing over chord changes or playing over the way the chords are changing. Now, chord outline solos sound cool, but if you only use chord outline solos, it's gonna get boring very quickly. So your next step is to do the exact same thing using your scale. So this time I'm gonna improvise using a G mixolydian scale. In other words, G to G with an F natural. And then I'm gonna to switch to a C mixolydian scale. So C to C with a B flat. So all I'm doing is taking the G mixolydian scale and snaking through it a bit. And then when I hit that C7, I'm gonna snake my way through the C mixolydian scale. Take a listen to what it sounds like when I do them back to back. If you're watching this video, then I'm guessing that you'd like to get a whole lot better at navigating your way through chord progressions or just improvisation in general. If that's the case, then I'd like to invite you to come check out the Scott Paddock Sax School. In the Sax School, I have courses dedicated to improvisation that will start you off at the very beginning and take you all the way up through soloing over advanced chord progressions. I also have courses dedicated to just about anything you wanna learn on the saxophone. So if you'd like to take the guesswork out of what to practice, how to practice, and what to practice next, then come hang out with me at the Scott Paddock Sax School. I'll put a link in the video description below. It's really easy to hear that chord progression even when I am using just the scale. So that time I started on the root each time, in other words, the first note, so for the G7, I started on the G, and for the C7, I started on the C. When I improvise using the scales in root position, you can definitely hear the chord progression, but it kind of sounds like I am just playing scales. So what you wanna do is snake your way through the scale a little bit, in other words, wind your way through it, and jump around to some chord tones for each of the chords. That's gonna make it sound a whole lot more interesting. That time, it didn't just sound like I was playing two different scales, it sounded like I was playing one scale that blended together really nicely and really easily. So there is a really easy trick to make that happen. And that trick is to look at the differences in the key signature. So for my G7, I have all naturals. And for my C7, I have a B flat. So instead of thinking about my entire G mixolydian scale and my entire C mixolydian scale, all I'm gonna do is play in all naturals over the G7. And then when I hit the C7, I'm not gonna change what I'm thinking. I'm just gonna add in a B flat. So whatever line that I'm playing, whatever eighth note line I'm playing, I'm just gonna switch from a B natural to a B flat because that is the only change between the two scales. So you don't need to think about the entire G7 or G mixolydian scale and the entire C mixolydian scale. All you have to think about is G to G with a B natural. And then when you hit the C7, then all you have to do is change that B to a B flat. So here is an example of me switching back and forth between the G7 and the C7 several times. As you can hear, when I improvise just changing my key signature, everything sounds really smooth and that line just keeps going. It doesn't sound like I have to start over every time I am playing a different chord or using a different scale. So if you think about the way the chords and the scales go, go together by key signature, your lines are gonna sound a whole lot smoother. Now, when you are playing each of the chords, you still wanna try to bring out those chord tones. So for the G7, you wanna bring out the G, B, D, and F. And for the C7, you wanna bring out the C, E, G, and B flat. That's gonna really lock you in to each of the chords. But when you're playing through these eighth note lines, just think about changing between the difference of a B natural and a B flat to, to fit each of these chords. And those are the three simple steps for soloing over a chord progression. The first thing you wanna do is play chord outline solos. So solo just using chord tones. 
then you want to plug in your scales. But when you plug in your scales, you still want your chord tones to be the most important notes. And then to make everything you play sound really smooth, instead of thinking about switching scales entirely every time you move from one chord to the next, you want to think about what notes are different in the key signature and only think about switching those notes so that your lines are still really smooth. Now, this is just a basic approach to learning how to improvise over a chord progression, but it is a great starting point to get comfortable moving from one chord to the next. If you're enjoying this video, please make sure that you give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell for notifications. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you would like to learn some more saxophone tips and techniques, come check me out at the Scott Paddock Sax School. Bye.